Folks, welcome to the Whiskey Media Happy Hour. I'm your host, Ryan Davis. We're going to be talking about comic books, technology, movies, video games, and whatever else comes off the tops of our many headed heads. It's a uh, free show this week, so uh, everyone can enjoy a little bit of the madness. And uh, we're going to kick things off here with Sarah Lima from Comic Vine. Hi. Sarah! Ryan! How's your Friday? It's good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. How is PAX? Uh, PAX was uh, awesome and exhausting. Uh, yeah. We put up a bunch of, of cool videos uh, on the site that folks can see to uh, kind of, uh, uh, I guess, you know, maps our journey through Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, ton of fun. Uh, great turnout for the panel. So Very cool. Very good. Uh, but then we rolled into this week straight off of that. We left Sunday. Uh, yeah, we left Seattle guys... Sunday and then back in it here. So uh, it's been, been a long rest. couple of weeks. You do not rest. So we are looking forward to this three-day weekend we have coming up. Labor Day weekend, everyone. Very exciting. Last time I can wear this white shirt. Um, oh no, we don't follow that rule anymore. So, uh, Sarah, it's been uh, exciting times in the world of comic books um, lately. It has, actually. This was the big week that everybody was just, they, they absolutely could not wait for. This is the release of Justice League number one is, is out now. So yeah. it came out on Wednesday. And I have it here. So um, this, this actually had a midnight release, which never happens. Uh -huh. Very strange. So Tuesday night at midnight, we got Flashpoint and... Uh, Justice League number one. Now, Flashpoint was supposed to wrap up the DC Universe as we know it. Yeah. And, the and that was the last big summer event that they this had. Was, this was the last big summer event. So you can't have a big summer event without showing Batman crying. Uh -huh. And I wish I had, you know, s supplied this picture, but he does <laughs> He does cry. you got to buy the comic. Like a little you baby. See, you want to see Batman crying. Yeah, that never happens. Like a little girl. Like a little girl. I would cry too. But uh, Justice League number one is the big news, so they reintroduce these characters. Mm. And I think that we've got some... Uh, you know, interior pages that we can show you guys. But anyway, so these so, guys do so, not know each other. So just for a, a little, a little uh, the, the uh, premise. Pre preface here, yeah. uh, this is full reboot of the entire, the entire DC, DC universe. universe. In fact, it was just uh, announced, a, a, I think a, an hour ago, that Barry Allen's never been married, and Barry Allen's the Flash, mm. and he's been married, like, Forever. Well, that was kind of so, one of the like, yeah. one of the the key story points in in Flashpoint, right? Was when he when he came back, he would, like his wife did not know him anymore. He, he yeah. did not know Fl his wife Flashpoint, anymore. Flashpoint was you know everything that you knew was got messed up, and it was messed up by the Flash. And it, you have to read issue five to but, understand. But, but, so but, the, so the last big storyline they had was about. Uh, not the timeline being yeah. messed up, and now yeah. we have a whole new timeline. Yes, co uh, coincidentally. So, a whole new so this timeline. is this is everyone. Everything old is new again, and right. we have uh, Justice League, one of the oldest superhero teams of all time, uh, coming together for the first time. Uh, yeah, so they're they're meeting each other for the first time. So you've got uh, Green Lantern and, and Batman actually meet for the first time in this issue, and they do not get along, which is, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense, but. Um, this is drawn by Jim Lee, which hasn't drawn anything since All Star Batman. Oh wow! Okay. And uh, it's beautiful. Like yeah. as as much as the story itself is a, a lacking a little bit, um, this is a beautiful, beautiful comic. Jim book. Lee bringing his A game. Yeah, totally. And um, if you've never read a comic before and you've always wanted to read a comic book, you should get this. I think it had like I think it broke some records mm. in pre sales. So but, I know uh, uh, leading up to to this launch, there's uh, you know. Uh, a lot of people having having doubts about this this whole reboot for for DC. Yeah. Uh, has that opinion changed any with with Justice League One out there now? Um, I I don't know. I, I think uh, fans of the series don't like it. I mean, comic readers were not really into this yeah. uh, first issue because it, it was really catered to new readers. So this is it's like hey, let me hold your hand through this. You know, so if you know these characters, you're going to be bored as hell. Yeah, like, you're like, all right, I, I already yeah, know. Yada, I know yada, this yada. stuff already. Thanks a lot, guys. But are they are they introducing kind of any wrinkles to this? Like, is there any sort of unexpected? Like, like you said, you know, Batman and Superman meet each other and they don't like each other. Yeah. Like that's you know, so, the, the, their their character qualities are kind of inherently such that that makes sense. Like, right. And you, you said the thing about Barry Allen. Any anything else in there that's been um, revealed in this first issue? Uh, that's been revealed in this issue. Uh, they don't. They don't know Superman. Like mm -hmm. they don't understand him. Okay. And um, 
So all the Kryptonian mythology, that stuff, like, none of that's known. And the whole, you know, the legend of Batman, Mm -hmm. that's back. So Batman, I don't don't know if he's going to, we don't know if he's going to work with the police because the police attacks him in this Mm. issue. So that's a big deal. You know, how is Jim Gordon going to fit into the Batman universe? And and will that relationship between them exist in in these comics, in the upcoming issues? Um, We've also got a trailer from the new DCU that they put out a bunch of trailers for their upcoming comics. Unfortunately, uh, it's not the best trailer. Like... I don't know if you know how I feel about motion comics, but I just don't really like I also comics. am not a fan of motion comics. I, I feel like... I don't you, like it when they bleed into my video games. It doesn't make any sense to me. You know, you either have the comic book or you have the cartoon, but that weird in-between thing, yeah. it just... I've never really liked it. It always feels cheap. Yeah. It always feels like, oh, we couldn't afford to animate it. Yeah. And we didn't feel like the art was good enough on its own to just be it, static I, somewhere. I, I don't know. I, it's, it's like... It doesn't feel three-dimensional enough, you know? It, it just feels a little weird. I think what would have been really cool, and they've been also putting out some individual trailers for each comic, you know, mm-hmm. Batman number one, Batgirl number one. So they've all been getting their own trailer. And I think that the mistake that DC made is by not having the creators that are working on these books narrating something. Mm-hmm. So they're not adding any dialogue. All you have is a bunch of pictures. And pictures are great, you know. Wait, so they, are they, they seriously for these things not like no? No, like they have some crappy heavy metal music right now. Like I, I don't really get it. You know, this doesn't make me want to buy the comic. Yeah. It's just, and it doesn't tell me anything about the relaunch. Although that. But these Jonah are these, just, these are just promotional cool. in nature, though, right? Yeah. These aren't, okay. Yeah, but it, it's it's sort of pointless if you ask me. Um, what I did think was cool is. Uh, um, I don't know if you remember a couple weeks ago they had Henry Cavill, Cavill, whatever, mm. I don't know, his costume. Yes, yeah, all that stuff, yeah. yeah. Um, so we got some close-up shots of that costume. I saw there were some week. some kind of uh, on on the sound stage yeah. shots out there. And the costume looks a lot like the Superman costume in the current the, in yeah, the, the, in the new current. and improved DC right. universe. Which I think is pretty cool. Um, a lot of people are complaining because Henry's costume does not have a belt and if you scroll down a little bit, Vinny, you're gonna come into some big stuff. Anyway, so uh, we've got like, <laughs> uh, he's got that weird belt thing uh-huh. that doesn't make any sense and I, I think uh, Alex. Yeah, no, a little lower. Yep, okay. That's good, Al- z- good zoom, a pan down. Alex Navarro complained about the yep. texture of, of it's the good. The zoom's good. It's good. Pan down. Costume being like Spider-Man's costume. I agree. I think it's a little weird. I think it's nice to have that texture, though. I just don't, don't get the belt, the lack of belt thing. All right. <laughs> um, okay. So, so uh, the, the one thing that strikes me as a little odd is, is uh, you know, launching uh, uh, Justice... Uh, I'm not even going to look over there. <laughs> launching Justice League I'm first. I'm just going to you. Um, uh, before launching the individual character uh, uh, books, because okay. you're not getting a like, w- w- you haven't established like, okay, what is the new tone for these individual yeah. characters? Like, what is the new Flash? Like, what is the new Green Lantern mm-hmm. like? Uh, you know, I, h- how are they defining these characters now that they have this reboot? Because it's it seems like this is an opportunity for them to do whatever the hell they want, yeah. and if whatever the hell they want is just retelling the same story yet again, then that seems like a huge waste of everyone's time. Um, I think, I don't think that it's it's uh, it's the same stories all over again mm-hmm. because there's a lot that um, that exists in continuity about these characters and, and the things that they've done mm-hmm. that is totally disregarded in this new universe. So so that's that's that. But I I would argue that this is a good book to start out with, not only because the creative team. I mean, Jeff Johns is the creative director for DC yeah. and Jim Lee's co-publisher. Like these guys are. DC Comics, you know, um, but you need to tell the story of how they meet, yeah. and then you can segue into their individual books. You know, here's who this person is, and this is why he's acting this way here. Okay. So I, I don't know. I, I thought I thought it was a good start. Yeah. Um, but I don't. I think for fans, like. I just I just see like you know uh, like Marvel when they launched their Ultimate line like that was their opportunity to you know start from scratch mm-hmm. and have this you know have this opportunity to like we want to do some weird stuff we want to you know take these uh, yeah. characters in a different direction we want to free them of you know the confines 80, of continuity 80 years yeah. of, of continuity that they have to you know for for whatever reason mm-hmm. keep up with so. Um, well, I, I think I'd argue that Marvel always does it a little better. I, I would absolutely argue that. Uh, but before we go, but go far, too far that. down that rabbit yeah. hole, uh, let's see if we can get some questions from Perry in the chat. Yeah, uh, Sam Sweden wants to know, was Flashpoint a 
good send off to the DC universe, or should they have done a Final Crisis Twilight? I hated Final Crisis, so I would never do Final C Crisis at all. It's way too confusing. But um, Flashpoint was a good end to Flashpoint, but it was not a good segue into a whole new universe. And that's the biggest problem with that issue, is that it, it was lacking, like, hey, why is everything different? Like, that still hasn't been explained, you know? So, so Flashpoint in itself as a miniseries is good. It's interesting, you know, it's, it's kind of like an Ultimates, like a Marvel Ultimates, yeah. but it's not gonna give you any kind of an idea of what to expect in the future of the Justice League or the So, so Final the Crisis you, was not, is not a thing that you would have wanted uh, and it sounds like like Flashpoint was a fine story in and of itself, but it sounds like it it just inherently lacked an ending. Like it didn't. Yeah. Even... Like as like I, I cried three times reading the last issue of Flashpoint. Like yeah. I won't even lie. Like it was a really. There were parts of it that were really really good and special. And yes, I cried when Batman cried because I mean why wouldn't you? You know it's Batman crying. Poor Batman. It is. Sad. I would laugh at Batman. You're mean. The one opportunity. The one opportunity you get. Ugh. No, I'm gonna laugh at that, but it doesn't. It doesn't tell you what <laughs> we're gonna expect. That's all. <laughs> um, anything else going on in, in comics? Um, so next week we've got a lot of, of stuff happening. I think Batgirl number one comes out next week, so I'm right. excited because Barbara Gordon, who's been in a wheelchair for 20 years, is out of a wheelchair and she's Batgirl again. Right. So that's a that's a big. So one. so we're just gonna keep seeing over like the next month or so the the continued uh, relaunch of, of yeah. DC Universe. So 52 new titles, and if they don't sell, then they're canceled. <laughs> so that'll be fun. So so okay, like, uh, six months out, how many of these books survive? I, I want your gut reaction right now. Well, they've already, they're already planning like books to replace the books that fail. Okay, so, but so of, of, have, the, I, of the launch guess, lineup, if I had to guess, and like I I really hope nobody gets offended. Um, I don't think that Stormwatch is going to succeed. Mm -hmm. I think Grifter has his own, and he's from Wildstorm. Yeah. I don't think that's going to make it. So you, you don't think like the, the Wildstorm crossover stuff that they're trying to integrate into so. it, you don't think that stuff's going to last? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, so yeah. what do you but think, that, like that's half? Just me. No, more than half. More than half. Because I mean, you have to think, you know, if, if your comic, and this is, these numbers are pretty bad, but if your comic is selling 20,000 copies, they're still going to publish it. Like, that was the rule. But under this new DC entertainment, I don't know if those rules are going to apply. Because this, this priest has sold, I think, 200,000 copies, mm -hmm. or over 200,000, which for comic books is really good. Like, in the 90s, we had over a million. You know, if your comic sold a million, that's a good comic. You know, but and that, that number's wrapped. Well, Sarah, we'll, we'll check back in with you yeah. and, uh, and see how things are going in yeah, the future. Yeah, I'm really sorry to end it on, like, such a, <laughs> wow, comics don't sew. That's, that's okay. It's just, it's just the truth. Sarah Leo, oh. Comic Vine, thank you so much. All right, bye. Uh, I believe we are going to throw it over now to uh, the Giant Bomb crew for some Mari. Oh! Yeah. Hey, guys. Hey, Ryan. How's it going, Patrick? Why'd you laugh at Batman? You're so, you're so short. Why are you so? Uh oh, I even want to know what you're, what's going on down there. He's assumed his true form. <laughs> his hair's still tall enough to cover the monitor. Um, fellas, what are you looking at? What's going on here? You're looking at Mario. I suppose that's how you pronounce it. But it's yeah, it's this um, this viral video that's making the rounds. Uh, it's this Portal Mario mashup. Um, it's pretty early developments by this dev studio uh, called Stab Yourself because one of the guys stabbed himself with some scissors. So they. Register domain because you know As giant, I, giant bomb does not register domains after weird things happen either. What, what did he stab himself on purpose? I think no. we should probably establish that. Yeah, yeah. It was not, I, I, okay. I just take issue with the fact that their logo is a guy stabbing himself with a knife, not scissors. Like, where's the continuity? Well, running with scissors was already taken. Did, did they learn no mistakes from DC Universe? So they they have compiled a ver an early version of this game for us to check out. That's why it says giant bomb version at the top. So this is the. In addition to them porting all of original Super Mario Brothers and uh, the Lost Levels uh, as well, they are uh, making their own series of levels that are a little more accustomed to uh, what you would expect um, a combination of like, like this to work. Portal style stuff. Yes, because really when you just mash up Mario and Portal, uh, it's fun, but it doesn't necessarily always work. So, I mean, these are really not that... I've been watching you kind of mess around with this level. It seems like they are... I mean, obviously, this is all them kind of screwing around with these levels and, and, and figuring out what they can do, probably. But this stuff seems tough. 
Yes. Uh, and the problem in the current build right now, it's uh, on a keyboard and mouse. So uh, it's kind of hard to play Mario stages on a keyboard and mouse. See if I can get this. Ooh, nothing wrong with that. Norm likes to play Mario with a keyboard and mouse. So, so Patrick, <laughs> you, you've been in contact with the, the developers like it's the law of this. To me. I don't know. You've been in contact with the developers of this fun little thing, right? Yeah, there's a, there's a story up on the set. Oh. <laughs> keyboard and oh mouse, God. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, God. Right, let's see if I can pull this off again. Uh, yeah, there's an article up. Oh, no. Article up on the site where I talked to them uh, about this. They also did this really weird game that... Uh, the reason I started talking to them was because Jeff was looking at this Not Tetris video which is where they take Tetris and they infuse it with real physics. Which makes Tetris completely insane. Like, what? it's like crazy oh, people made oh Tetris. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. There we go. <laughs> All right. All right, this, this one is really crazy. Hey, Patrick, should this game be making audio right? Should we be making sound right now? Uh, n maybe. Okay. Sometimes it there, does, sometimes it doesn't. Got it's it. A, this is, whole, it's a, it's this a is bootleg pre-release yeah. software. Really, inco really incomplete build, which is great that you pointed that out because they were like, hey, don't show any glitches. Okay. Yeah, just point out oh my god. Um, you got this. Oh. Uh, this one is tough. <laughs> you do not have it. All right, let's see if we can. Oh, oh got it. There you go. All right. Um, Nicely done, sir. How's this one? Oh. Uh, so what was their what was their their inspiration? Like like what made them decide? Yeah, let's let's put Portal into Mario. Basically, they just they're sort of mantra with the not games, which is sort of one of their. Uh, series of games. They like to just infuse games that didn't, don't have real physics with some sort of crazy physics model that screws up, like the continuity of the gameplay. Oh, and did, did they do like that analog Tetris? Yeah, that's, yes. that's okay. the. That's, oh yeah, that's, that's the, the not Tetris game. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Let's see if I, can I pull this off. Did not. This I misheard that. All right. I, no. Does it? No. Get. No. Hey. This one I figured out by accident while, while we were setting up. Let's see, I think I'm able to just do it with this. Oh, oh, oh almost. Oh, no oh, lord. I'm not sure how we even did this before. So I might have to just give up on this one. But it, the, the level ends right here anyway. But yeah, you can do some, some weird. Oh, that's oh, right. There, there it is. is. Uh, all right, so then the level ends there. But they only have one uh, in this build they gave us. But now. They, just because I requested it, they added multiplayer. Oh so you God. can see, we're not going to do it in this one. We are going to go to normal Mario. So now I have. So now we're going to do a little right. four players. So uh, Jeff, Brad, and Dave, yeah. grab your controllers, gents. So it triggers. Have you guys played any of this at all yet? No. I've, I've messed with it for a little bit. Five yeah. seconds. Okay. Nope. Zero. Here, here we go. So do the port. Did, can everyone use everyone else's portals? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't use the D pad. Uh, no, yes, analog stick. Whoa. <laughs> All right, well, then to spice things up some more while you're doing this, let's, uh, let's start getting some questions. I, I, appear, to, so I appear to be stuck in limbo. Oh, what? My favorite is just moving Let's try, let's try and move forward, just backwards. guys. Right. Every, every, just backwards. Every, let's try and move forward a little bit. Oh. Come on, Dave. Oh, fine. Fine. You can move so forward this is, by walking like, backwards. This is like New Super Mario oh. Brothers. Oh. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I want the mushroom. To be clear, this is, not, this is not the music oh. from the game. Okay, if you die, then we all have to start over. <laughs> Who's died? Who died? It wasn't me. That time. Okay. Wait. Now wait, just stop, stop. Everyone just chill. I can't chill. Now, now we can move forward. Ah. Oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got it, I got it. Oh, I had it, I had it. I got this. Yeah. All right, step by step. So we got this. Get him out of here. Uh, so now, I'm confused uh, who's I, going I got it, I got us. it. There you go. All right, look at that <laughs> now they're all, Yeah, now they're all dropping back where that whoop, turtle was earlier. Wait. Oh, oh, great. oh, oh, oh God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Who portaled that? I think I died for real that Hello. time. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's just. Oh, <laughs> oh no! What happened? I see what happened. All right, one. We'll do one more. One more push. Here. Perry, and then you're kicking us all out. Kicking you all out because it it it, it so sends you back in. Are wanting to know like is this legal and Hello? why have they not been uh, shut down? If you know, can they be shut down? Uh, uh, well, currently yes. this is not a commercial product. And that and that is one of the distinct. Uh, oh, what happened? 
One of the distinctions they make is that, yeah, they are not going to charge this. The source code will be open, uh, and that Nintendo and Valve oh. in the past have been pretty cool about things like this, so long as it's not for profit. Um, of course, now we are broadcasting this on a rather large stage, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but they should be okay. Nintendo and Valve historically. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. wait no. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, no. So yeah. So legally speaking, uh, yeah, uh, uh, both Valve oh, and Nintendo would have every right to shut Put this whole thing there. down in a heartbeat. But uh, you know, how does that benefit them? Oh wow. Um. <laughs> not, the, not the best place shoot. with their rad. I, I think the solution here is shoot more portals. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm falling forever. Oh, my God. Oh. Pine tree. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh. All right, kick, kick us all out. All right, let me just let me see if I can pull up one. Uh, let me try and run through this level. There's two cool things. Uh, one is... Uh, yeah, hit them all. Three. You got it. You got it. Okay. Hold up. Nice. That. Oh, okay. oh! <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys have played Portal before, right? What is that? <laughs> Actually, this music's wildly appropriate for. Right. Oh, I didn't do that. It seems like it is, it is somehow oh, it is somehow on. way tougher to try to apply Portal it, it, logic it is. in in Mario than it is in Portal. I want to try and get to this one. Does this game work with the Power Glove? Anything works with the power of love, if you believe. Uh, uh, no, this does not work with the power of love. I want to believe. <laughs> My favorite thing about this is watching Mario moonwalk. Yeah. Just the, the fact that there is no reverse animation. Well, there is. It depends on which way you're pointing the gun. But it is, It's like abuse. He runs backwards. Okay. Yeah, he will ah! he, he right, run, 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 run backwards, time. though. Screw that up. Run backwards. Two abuse references in as many days. Yep. What, what other video game website will deliver that? Get Dave Taylor on the phone. That's right. Crack.com joint now. <laughs> oh, 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 that was, man. That was kind of awesome. Skillful portal, portaling. I don't think that's a word. And doing center pressures. Come on, man. Yeah, go. Oh, whatever, man. Don't playing, stop. Playing well, games in front hey, of people with pressure is easy. Anybody can do it. Hey, shut up, Gary Witta. <laughs> uh, get him. <laughs> uh, Perry, any other questions out of the chat? Uh, yeah, Butano wants to know if the game is running on Flash or through an NES emulator. Uh, no, they, yeah, they rip the uh, art assets and the music from um, the, the original games, and then uh, and there's a programming language called like Lua. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's all Lua stuff. Yeah, so they, they develop it all on their own. So this is not this is not emulated. This is all new code. Oh, oh. 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 Oh, oh wait, no, no, you don't want that at all. Uh, I gotta get. Oh man, <laughs> choose your next move wisely. That's pretty good though. <laughs> I try and get. Just gonna need to move that blue portal. There you go. Oh, oh wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, that's, yeah, that's what you want. <sighs> all right, can I do it? Oh, oh, oh nice. <laughs> There we go. Well, so that, so that is Mario. It is hopefully coming out for the end of the year, but they're because of all the interest, they're trying to push it up for the next two months. Um, and I was trying to convince them to do a not Mega Man, but they, we couldn't come up with any good ideas. So there you oh. go. Uh, and, and this currently is only running on a PC. Uh, it's, it's only PC, but it'll come out for uh, PC, Mac, and I think Linux when it comes out uh, later this year. So very, very cool. Uh, look for uh, that. Stabyourself.net. Perry, any other questions out of the chat before we let them go? Um, yeah, Obens wants to know uh, what other Mario game mashup would you guys like to see? Uh, Mario and kart racing. That's a good one. Yeah, that, that, I, I think that might have some legs. <laughs> All right, Patrick, sounds like a bunch of crap to me. Thanks for uh, thanks for reaching out, to these guys. You you've got a story on the site. Uh, about the, this team and about the development of this, correct? Yep. So people can go check that out and uh, stabyourself.net. Correct. Is the website. Uh, thank you guys again. Cool. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm now joined here on the couch, Mr. Matthew Rory, screen.com. Hi. How you doing? I got my can hand cold. Nice. Just for you. Oh, this feels so good. Just for you. It's so warm in here. <laughs> I don't even know. I'd gladly take the cold hand. Oh. 
How you doing, Matthew? It's all right. It's all right. I'm tired. Yeah. How's movies? They're getting worse. Yeah. I hear people talking. Fantastic. It's almost like there was a show going on over here. <laughs> Karen Snyder, ladies and gentlemen. Like How a mouse. <laughs> church mouse. Yes. Do you think church mice are really quieter than other mice? Or is that a myth? You know what? I think church mice are probably the loudest ones. They just have better PR. Do you think racehorses pee more than regular horses? Absolutely. Okay. Just have to hold it in. Yeah, it's true. While they're racing. <laughs> pee while they're racing. Yeah. Uh, they've done tests. And they've it's, done it's, it's science. <laughs> so you say movies are getting worse, but we're getting out of the summertime and into the fall. But... We're still like a month away from all the Oscar bait stuff. Oh, so this, so so like, this is just the stuff that's getting dumped because it wasn't yeah, good enough to be the yeah. big summer movies. Two movies this weekend were not Put that we're not screened for there. critics. Two, two. That that rarely happens. Two movies this weekend. What were the uh, the non screen? Uh, Shark Night 3D, which we might as well talk about first because I don't I forgot to get a get a trailer for it. Sorry, and Alex reviewed it anyway. So yeah, not screened for critics. Shockingly enough, a movie called Shark Night 3D was not screened for critics. I was really looking forward to. We do have a trailer. Oh, okay, I, was, cool. I was really looking forward to this until I saw that it was rated PT. Yeah, I know. Because uh, a movie about sharks and girls in bikinis and girls in bikinis and it's in 3D and there should be and something. it's called Shark Night 3D. Yes. Um, everything about that is like keys directly into all of my interests. Yeah, you, you, I, 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 I thought this was going to be kind of a piranha-ish kind of thing. It looked more serious. They, see, yeah, yeah, that no, that should be should be R. And uh, and uh, directed by the man who directed Final Destinations and two Snakes and on four. A plane. And, and snakes, snakes on a plane. plane. A fine R rated. That oh, movie could have been pretty also good. Also, cellular, which is totally fine. Okay. Cellular is a. It's the Jason Statham, Kim Basinger. Oh uh, yeah. Cell oh, phone. The one where she's kidnapped. And she's kind yes. of calling. Who does she call? In Jason, that? Jason Statham. No, he's a kidnapper. Is he the kidnapper? I he's pretty it. sure. I forget. Uh, Perry in the chat. Who's the uh, Who's the guy who has to rescue him? I think is it Chris Evans or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Anyways, I, I, I'm gonna go to chair, Perry in the chat. Do it. You did it already. I did. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna abrogate your responsibilities. I like it. Uh, so, so zero star rating. Zero Alex. star rating zero from from Alex Navarro on screen. He can, said he could imagine a million other things that he would do more than watch this movie. He he it didn't sound like he'd even recommend it. Watch it for free, let alone in 3D. 3D is apparently terrible. Um, zero star ratings are very rare for us. Like six, we've done six of them. I think <laughs> say, three becoming years. increasingly less rare. Yes, I would say that. Um, uh, so apparently not good. Terror, horror. Zero star. Sharks. Sharks. Uh, Un unfortunate. I like a good uh, cheesy horror movie, and uh, I, I like uh, cheesy use of 3D, and uh, and that always seems like it could be a great combination. Apparently, um, it's not even fun. Apparently, it's not even cheesy fun. It's just yeah. kind of dark and morbid, and people getting slaughtered by red. But not, but not morbid enough where they could actually get an R rating. Like I feel. Yeah, it's weird. Like I would, uh, I would accept if it was just you know needlessly gory. A la, you know, Piranha 3D. Yeah, I, I don't get the I don't get the point of this movie existing really. What else is out this weekend? Well, the debt came out on Wednesday. Okay, uh, which I Al saw. Always a good sign. Yay! Well, I guess I guess holiday weekend. Well, the help came out on Wednesday, and look how much yeah. money that made. So this is another kind of adult drama. Uh, Mossad agents tracking down ex Nazis and trying to uh, bring them back to Israel to stand trial for war crimes. Heady stuff. Obviously, you know, get the popcorn and uh, smuggle in some <laughs> smuggle in some Well, vodka you know, it was good enough for uh, for Steven Spielberg. Yeah, no, it, it was, that, that was that was uh, those were uh, Arabs. Those were not uh, Nazis. Arab terrorists. Yeah, but you know, it's still it's, the, the, it's still Mossad. Definitely, going out definitely, and kind of the, the and the weird thing about Munich was Munich was very kind of emotional and uh, you know it was, it was a rough movie to watch. It yeah, was, it had some interesting stuff. Yeah, especially that scene at the end. Yeah. Talking about rough to watch. <laughs> um, the debt. Same more than ten. Jessica Chastain. This is a movie. This is like five, five movies from, from uh, Jessica Chastain this year. She's who's, been in everything. Who's Jessica Chastain? She was in The Help. She was in uh, Tree of Life. She was in uh, this, and she's in something else. Was she and, in Transformers. Yeah, also, no, I don't think so. She was not the uh, lady in Transformers, unfortunately. She so, any, was she in anything that I would have seen? Tree of Life? I don't know. You don't watch Terrence Malick movies? <laughs> uh, the Debt. It's The Debt, because it's I, it's the weighty, heady thing. It flashes back from 1965 to 1997. They all, all the older versions of these three young Mossad agents have to deal with the, the way shit went down in, in East Berlin. Is it any good? It's well done. It's all right. It's three stars. Yeah. That's what I gave it. Um, workmanlike. I'm going to say workmanlike. 
Yeah. People make fun of me for saying that. I like no. the word workman like that. No, workman like, well, it's, you know, obvious craft, but maybe just not the, the passion or the... Good spy craft stuff, like really good kind of, you know... Well, I mean, the, like film craft. The micro, micro camera yeah. work, 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 stuff like that. So yeah. uh, I enjoyed it. It felt a little dry mm -hmm. in a way, and it gets a little too thrillery at the end of it. It, it. it feels like it's going for this kind of emotional big scale, and then it brings it back to these like kind of love triangle between these three Mossad agents, which are kind of... If you're going to go Nazi... Butcher of you know concentration camp. Go go big. Yeah. Don't try to make it like a, a romance triangle. You know. Um, so I give it three stars. Three yeah. Stars. Three stars. Three stars. Three stars. Uh, it's gonna play to an older crowd, so it's not gonna be you know. What does that uh, What does that translate to in puppies? <sighs> we gotta wait for that. We gotta wait for that. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. I, I didn't mean to to break your thing. It's all right. What What was the other movie that you didn't give three stars to? Apollo 18 came out. That was the other movie that was uh, that was uh, not screened for critics. So so uh, fake found footage of this fake secret Apollo mission. Fake found footage. Uh, for all we know, it could be real. Uh, they actually did a really good job of setting doing, up the premise, doing backstory for the film too. You remember Blair, Blair Witch had one of the first like websites for a movie that was a big like the the fake website. Well, it was like the first viral. Yeah. Campaign. This has an amazingly well done. I think it's missioncontrolblog.org. Uh huh. Go there after the happy hour is over, but it's it has a, like a years and a half a year and a half worth of up worth of it. I'm trying to figure out worth the cost, of worth of updates uh, on it. So yeah, so Apollo 17 was the last real NASA mission to the moon. This posits the existence of a clandestine top secret Apollo 18 mission that goes to the moon for for science yeah. and to spy on the on the Russian cosmonauts or spy on Russia they find the fact that they find that the Russians have been to the moon right. and kind of been, been murdered been murdered dead and things are moving around and, and monsters things are on the moon disappearing I'm not going to spoil what the reveal is do they find out that it's made of cheese it is got weird stuff on it Am I? Oh, am I? Say. Does it have giant transformers? Is that the the reveal? That, no transformers. Because when I first, the first time I saw this trailer was still before um, uh, Transformers Three had come out, and they they were starting their trailers with that that whole yeah. yeah it's transformers on the moon. Neil Armstrong went and took pictures of transformers. That's why we sent guys to the moon in the '60s. It's an interesting film. I kind of I kind of dug, dug it a lot more than other critics have. Mm. I mean, it's getting like f's all around. Like this is fucking terrible. Set on fire kind of stuff. I like found footage films though. I don't know how you feel about them. Uh, I, I we were talking about this in the office earlier. I, you know, I feel like it has worked three times. Three times. It has worked three times. I'm gonna. Can I guess what yeah. your three? So I'm guessing Bear Witch. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping I'm guessing Last Exorcism because I kind of like that. No. One. Wreck or Quarantine. No. Uh, Cloverfield. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna lose to think what the other one is then. How about that? Uh, Paranormal Activity. Oh, okay. You PA one over PA two. I haven't seen PA two. PA two is better. Um, but uh, I feel like it's it's definitely kind of a du jour thing. Uh, it, it comes out like they're like one or two movies a year, but, but it's so distinct. But it's, but it's one of those things where like one movie, like like you know Blair Witch came out mm -hmm. and nailed it mm -hmm. and had did you know did it so successfully. Yeah. Uh, you know, arguably mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, high watermark, like but, but, right uh, right high, high, high watermark, but also like genre defining. Yeah. I mean, there have been movies before that, like uh, Cannibal Holocaust was kind of a found footage thing. Sure, There have sure. been some older Italian horror movies, but that was really kind of the first modern one. Uh, really yeah, well, and also just the you know the the veracity of their the storytelling, like yeah. they they maintained it really nicely. Yeah, uh, they and had then, no credits or anything like that. It's and it was kind of, and then it was followed up by stuff trying to imitate that yeah, yeah. and done poorly. A lot like, of parodies. That movie was parod parodized more yes. than almost anything that came out. Uh, and so then you have years of kind of nothing, and then you know so like Cloverfield happens, and mm -hmm. it's like. Oh, it's okay. going to become popular Came again. In. People try it, they fail, yeah. and then Paranormal Activity tries it. Have you seen Last Exorcism? I did From last year. Uh, you didn't like it? Oh, I hated the ending. I hated and the, the ending. The ending is so really much. shitty. Uh, this movie, Palatine, uh, has kind of the same little CGI thing where it's, it's built up. The build up, it's only ninety minutes long, but the build up is strong enough where yeah. you don't. Uh, you, I, I thought it was pretty effective. And the weird thing is, it's set in nineteen seventy two. So they have all these Super 8 cameras and stuff like that. So a lot of it's in 4.3. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's been dirtied up a lot. A lot of it runs at less than 24 FPS. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a dirty film to watch. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of a... It, it's the verisimilitude is there, but it's also kind of a, a, a movie that is, uh, you know, not the cleanest film to watch ever. So uh, I, I mean, I like the premise. I like the look of it. Uh, you know, I like... I, I, the, 
the the NASA programs, the yeah. moon mission stuff. Like they had to go I, on record. NASA had to go on record and say, "Oh, this is fun. We didn't have anything to do this, man." I am I am fascinated just by that stuff in general. So to you know set a piece of fiction, especially a piece of horror fiction. Yeah. In that milieu, uh, uh, seems seems potentially compelling. Pretty well done. Five million dollar budget, and they got the weight of everything right. You ever seen movies where they're on like Mars and they're fucking yep. running like Earth gravity? They everything's kind of weighted, everything's floaty. So they, yeah. they did that well. I gave that uh, three stars as well. I saw that for card. a total of six puppies. Oh no! Oh my god! Twist. Oh, guys, I love them. A twist. I there's two there, and then there's four more. Oh, eat them up. What kind of puppies are these? Sleepy. I think they're puggles. I think little puggles. Puggle butts. Oh, they're playing, yeah. and there's a mommy. That's seven, the kind of, but... Um, What's the six pups? Six pups, yes. I would be so full if I was in the same house with these guys. Would you put it on, like, a like a hoagie roll? I would probably would make a just, pizza and put them all out on the I, pizza? I don't know. I, oh, look at him. He's just playing by himself. He's like, I'm just would rolling you get some, around like, Would you get some nori, and would you make, like, California Oh, look rolls? at him. Oh! Oh my gosh, I. A little bit of sticky rice. A little, uh. Some, like I, sliced up avocado. You'd have to shave them first to make sure you don't get any fur in your Some mouth. Some imitation but, oh, crab meat in there. I would eat them up right in my mouth, not even a crunch. They'd be so small, they'd just go right down yeah, my oh. belly. Right down into my belly. Oh, so good. Uh, let's see if we get some, some questions out of, out of Perry in the chat. Peril! Uh, yes. Periwinkle. Indeed. <laughs> Mr. Maz wants to know uh, is. Jaws 3D better or worse than Shark Knight 3D? I haven't seen Jaws 3D. Uh, yeah, we are ill-equipped to answer either of those questions. I've seen neither, so. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go for the Jaws 3D is probably better, because it is probably, I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just guessing zero stars versus probably one star. <laughs> Jaws, the Jaws series kind of obviously, Spielberg had nothing to do with that after Jaws 1. It yeah. kind of went way downhill really quick. I wanna go back and revisit Jaws 2, though. Um, which You know what I'm gonna go back and see? Orca. Okay. You ever hear about you know Orca? It was the uh, like uh, uh, who was it? It was like, who, who did Dune? Who was the producer on Dune? Uh, Lorenzo de Bonaventura. No, it's not Lorenzo. Lorenzo. De Lorenzo. De Laurentiis. Dino De Laurentiis. Oh, Dino De Laurentiis. So he yeah. made Orca like two years after Jaw came out, the killer killer whale movie. Yeah. And apparently it's terrible. So uh, another question. How about that, Perry? Yes. Liquid Swords wants to know what animal would you like to see in an animal attack movie? Badgers. I was actually just going to say badgers. Really? Yeah. Odd. We already have the rabbit one, Night of the Lepus, which I recommend to anybody who's... We are, we are uh, in, in sync like that. Badgers. Um, man. <laughs> <laughs> Twist! <laughs> and with that, Matthew Rory, thank you for uh, thank coming you. and Thank you. I'm so sorry I'm so us. terrible today. Uh, no, it's I'm okay. I'm not prepared. Four hours you, of you, it's, No, we're good. We're good. We're happy. Uh, let's bring it over. Let's, let's close out the show here today. Uh, with Mr. Will Smith and Mr. Norman Chan from Desert.com. Thank, thank you, Ryan. Hi guys. Hi, so, so Norm, I'm doing good, man. Uh, Badgers. Uh, I think I think raccoons, raccoons are, the are the world's deadliest urban animal. Well, you would fight six raccoons. I think six is my ultimate limit. Yeah, listen to the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so today's segment started almost what nine months ago to the day. This was a CES. segment nine months in the making. Yeah, with this. We were at CES in January, you may but we walked by the very last day at CES. You may have seen this on TV. It's the TV hat. It is the we TV hat. We saw a booth at CES where an old, curmudgeonly old man was You know, he could be watching this. It's out live to the internet. With maybe five dozen of these hats. Yeah, a whole bunch of these hats. They all smell like they're, van and cigarette smoke, they're called, It's called the TV hat, yeah. not because there's a Hold TV on. built in. I'm going to show you how this works. This inside it's is my iPhone. For, it's iPhone compatible. Yeah, it's iPhone compatible. Uh, I'm trying to turn on my iPhone. Basically, what this is, is it's a hat that you can put on your head, and it has these things that flap down to give you shields, mm -hmm. so you can watch TV. I'm going to type in my password here. Okay. Uh, and I should have some movies queued up, ready to go. Maybe, so you're watching... Right, that's email. <laughs> this you're, is... You're, you're, you're taking the Muni, taking yeah, the, I'm ta the taking the BART. And you sit down, <laughs> and you open your backpack, and you yeah. take and you take out this hat. Yeah, and you put this ridiculous thing on. Now here, you, have to, do you, have to, you have to watch a movie. Here's the thing. You could watch whatever you want. It could oh. be something private. Okay. It could be something public. It could be home movies. Now, the thing is, at first glance, it looks like it would be easy to mock this. Because it's, I mean, it's I'm going to put it on. It's easy to mock this. Just so you can, you know, you have your headphones on. And, you got the cord from your headphones. And I got the cord. I'm going to put that in my pocket. You so get to a profile view. Show, show how long this is bill that, is. I'm watching Curb Your Enthusiasm right now. What are you doing, Norm? Watching you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. And, and as if that's not good enough, 
There's a magnifier. I don't know if you can see that, but look, yeah. you can you can see it makes the iPhone screen bigger. Enhance. Yeah, look at that. It's the TV hat. And when you want to travel, when you want to put it away, you just unplug your headphones, turn off your phone, fold it up, and it, the, all the flap stuff snaps back into place. So it works as a regular hat, is what you're saying. It is. Well, it's a really long bill. It is It is a ridiculously long bill. Put it on. It's kind of like one of those goofy hats that you get at Disney World. You know what I'm talking about? So it's, it's like that's like his you, nose. The, so I tested this. Yes, yeah, so you, you sat in on a train. I, I've used it. I sat on BART the other day and I wore this when I was driving into work. Uh, there are a few things that I noticed. Okay. First off, with an iPhone 4 in the pouch, which, you know, the pouch is Velcroable, it's easy to get the phone out. It's real front heavy, so you yeah. end up. It kind of pulls, pulls. You gotta look down all not the time. Not good for your posture. It's, it's not. It's not a good look for it's you. It's a lean back. The other thing device. is, every single person I saw laughed. Every person on the train, at one point or another, but you couldn't see anyone. Yeah, that stupid hat on. Looked at me, and then I heard chuckling. And then a guy asked me what the fuck the hat was in exactly that language. Well, so he can buy one. It, it's. I got more comment on the TV hat than I did on the creepy toe shoes when I wore them. But on they weren't compliments. Last year. That's if true. Compliments. It was more commentary than compliments. Can we see the, the um, advertisement behind us? Yeah, so that also, advertisement's fantastic. These people look like they're having a lot of fun. Look at the logo. I think look watching pornography logo. on the train or airplane is what this is for. Oh. I think you load up your iPhone or iPod Touch or, or whatever with porn, and then you just watch with this in the privacy of your own you hat. You think. That's, if I were going to buy one of these for not, not 30, you've, not that you've, not you've tested. Yeah. I didn't test that. I don't have any porn-friendly iPhone videos. Now we, we have to be upfront. We got we got we actually didn't pay for videos. this. We talked to the guy. Yeah, the who guy gave it to us. He gave it to us. He was really pissed off. He at was Gizmodo. really pissed off. Yeah, because the day before Gizmodo brought up there, this is the stupid hat. Yeah, sir. and he was like, we I gave him a free hat, and they bashed it. Right. Well, they, that's no, what we, you know, he, they didn't take it seriously. I just want to let him know. I took this very seriously. I wore it in yeah. public. Yeah. I could have gotten beaten Real to death testing. because this hat is so fucking stupid. <laughs> also. <laughs> Also, it's incredibly low. I mean, I don't. I have this a, a relatively hat. large head, but the gap between ear and hat. Mm -hmm. Generally, my hat I like to come down under the, the top of my well, ear. Yeah, right? it is because you have That's, a giant head. Yeah. I, but it's one size fits all. What's I'm it, part of all. What's it look like? On this Chan? doesn't fit me. Mm. Uh, you, it looks. It fits a little bit better on Chan. He has a dainty <sighs> head. It looked, like, it looked like Chan's head rejected the hat. So, so we we been waiting for Maybe nine months. Maybe write that up. The, the reason well, we weren't waiting for nine months because we just had this right. Show. We, we wanted to have a segment with more we did, with technology. We thought hats. we needed more hats. Yeah, this hat alone, not enough to sustain a full happy hour segment. Enter hat number two, Norm. This is called the cap. Hold on, is it the sack cap or the, the cap, cap sack. sack? This is the cap sack, and it is described built as a fanny pack for your head. So it tends your you're heading to an ass. I just, I just <laughs> want to point out. Look, I need to get some sunglasses. It's so um, convenient. Here, here, wait, they're right here. I got my sunglasses out of Norm's ass pro, head pack. Pro tip. Turn it sideways. Why, why would you? And keep, also, it flips up. Why would you keep your things in Norman's hat? I just. I think. I think that this is a hat. I think this is for nudists, right? So I think you're at the nude beach. Then you should you, be wearing a hat. You got to keep the sun out of your eyes. You don't want to get sunburn on the face. What? So you're not wearing anything. Then you shouldn't else, be a nudist. But you got to have some place for your keys and wallet. Or you know, the best part about this, up. this product, the commercial. Yeah, the cap sack is pretty good. It's playing in the background. I hope we can get sound here. Wow. Because it's this is a wrap. I put my phone in your ass pocket. What's going on? How you doing, Ray? Is it already on? I can't tell more than some This is, this is, just watch the video, it's on YouTube. I'm pretty sure this is Young Jeezy. You think it's Young Jeezy? I, I don't know, I thought it was Bob Dylan's kid. Kind of sounds like him, from what I remember. That's our second hat. This is the second hat. Just let the video run for a bit. Okay. Uh, the, the hat also folds up into itself. Yeah, we couldn't figure out how to make that work, though. Oh, did you get it? No, I think... Do you think that this hat would increase or decrease your chance of luck with the ladies, Norm? Decrease. Depends on the ladies, is what I would say. Yeah. Maybe she needs, you know, you know hold her keys or something. Yeah. My, ladies are always looking for places to put stuff. Right. Coins. Hey, coins. Would you hold my lipstick? Yeah, I'll put my cap sack. In my cap. 
sack. It comes in three colors. It comes in more, way more than three oh, colors. Oh, more than three colors? Oh, it's yeah. at least it's like a yellow, dozen magenta, and cyan. So does the TV hat. Also, there's camel oh, the version. Yeah, and, and there's a khaki version of the TV hat. We forgot to talk about the price. The cap sack is $15. Can you keep a cap, a cap sack inside of a cap sack? Yo, dog, you can put a cap I sack in your so. cap sack. Yeah. yeah. Darth Vader likes cap sacks. There's, there's foul language. Now, the third hat. How much was the TV hat? $29.95. $30. It has a magnifier. Look. It magnifies shit. I'm going to take the magnifier out. Oh, you broke it. No, it goes back in. Look. <laughs> I could do this for the rest of the show. Good. Yeah. OK. No, wait. I, I don't think we got a good enough oh, you want more? magnifier. OK, hold on. I'm bringing it back. Oh my God, it's bright. Okay, all right. The third hat is we, a, we have a third hat. Yeah, the third hat. This is Whoa. this is what made this segment possible. Yeah. This man on the screen right now is a self-defense expert, self-proclaimed self-defense expert, and he, isn't that just D. Snyder? Uh, maybe he has a ponytail and he's wearing a hat. I have the hat right here. Not to Wait, hold, 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 on. Sack. hold on, guys, shut up for a second so we can hear the, the guy in the video. If I were using it defensively, it would be as if I were adjusting the bill in the sun. As I did that, I would hold strike. On, I, demonstrate this. I would strike as I did this man jump. It's an attack cap. <laughs> it's a sap cap. It's a sap like a cap. sapper. It's a like a blackjack hat. It has a pouch in the back, the night watchman, filled with lead shot. So that if someone comes at you, what you do is you surreptitiously reach up for your hat, which also is too fucking small for my head, and then come at me with your with your with your cardboard. Tube. Right, so we're, we're no, dog, give me all your money. No, ow! Look, see now Norm is stunned, and I can run away, keeping Escape, all of my money. Will. Maybe I lose the hat. I don't know. I'm well, going to you have, again. Shouldn't you have a, a mage there for, uh, you know... You think somebody needs to throw magic missile at me? I was going to say, if you're going to sap him, then do you have like a, a now, rogue that think, goes around and backstabs it's a, him it's afterwards? Team Fortress 2 is the sap. How much lead can you really put in a hat? I, it seems like about... It's a lot it's, of lead. It's kind of, I, mean, I wouldn't want that to strike ow, me. Ow. Ow. Well, you could just have My brittle bones. My hand's going to be bruised lightly. You want to go again? I'm going to hit you in the hands this Bill time. in the hands. I'm going to just do it with one hand. He says it can break your wrist. Well, for one thing, you're not using it as a hat. Like, I could carry around yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. I a, a sock full of batteries, okay, okay, and that would be plenty effective. I, you know, next week's segment is a sock full of batteries. Fantastic. Oh, okay. You better have more than day, that for the Big Live sir, Live show. Give me your money. Wait, here's my wallet. What, um, what is it you would like? I don't have money. any monies. Ow! <laughs> See? It works. <laughs> All right, I, I will say. Proof positive. Now I want to see role reversal. Norman Chan, take the oh, hat from man. him. No, he can't take it from me. He I just did it. Cap. Look at how horrible yeah, this I mean, system you, is. You just told you just me handed and I it to him. The double-handed way. I'm gonna, like this I'm is for saluting extra force. you. Like I'm saluting you, sir. Hey, Norman Chan, You're about to rob first me. First, salute me. Then give me all your monies. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh my thumb. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Rehearsal. All right, so how um, much is the sold. sap cap? The sap cap is a bargain at $18.99. $20. So it, you can get a self-defense hat of your very own, or a fanny pack for your head, or a hat that you can watch porn on the subway with. All of these things are available thanks to the miracle of technology. Is, is there not technology? Is, do, do, you, technology. do you foresee there being a way to combine all three of these into one product? I think you broke my thumb. <laughs> you shouldn't have struck so quickly. Well, I, I wanted to give the people what they wanted. Um, uh, no, yeah, I don't well, think you could put all this awesome into one hat. I, I think it's a challenge. Norman Chan, you believe that that I product could work? Okay, I'm going to TV it. hat first. Sack cap on top of the TV. Well, no, I'm saying. No, if, I put, if you put the sack cap on on top of the cap sack, then sap cap, then it's going to, I'm not going to be able to self-defend. The big problem with this theory is that I can't see my potential attackers, so I'm just flailing. All right, we need to end this segment right now, clearly. Somebody's going to get hurt. Before Will kills someone. Uh, that technology of tomorrow. I, I need some ice for Today. my thumb. So that's all of the hat technology you have brought for us today. Norman Tan, Will Smith, thank you guys so much for whatever that was. 
See you, Ryan. Have a good weekend. Enjoy uh, Labor Day. I, I will. And, uh, and so we end uh, another episode of the Whiskey Media Happy Hour. Uh, next week, next Friday, we are doing the second annual Whiskey Media Big Live Live Show Live starting at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We're going all day long. We have guests. We have craziness uh, and so much more, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what I want to tell you guys right now because we have a lot of bizarre stuff planned across the entire network. Uh, Comic Vine, Giant Bomb, Tested, and Screened uh, are all going to be here in force, so you will not want to miss that all day event. Once again, next Friday, September the 9th, 10 a.m. Pacific time is when it all kicks off. Uh, there will be no, uh, on Giant Bomb, there will be no Thursday Night Throwdown next week as we will be preparing for the Big Live Live Show Live. So uh, that's what you're going to want to uh, tune into. And with that, we end the Whiskey Media Happy Hour. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next Friday at the Big Live Live Show Live! <laughs> <laughs>